This is my mini six order bandpass subwoofer um, and a glossy finish. Um, I got through testing it recently. Um, pleased with the results with one caveat I'll explain at the end. Um, basically, external cubic volume makes it about 0.55 cubic feet. The internal is divided in the, in the two chambers. The upper chamber, I think, is 0 0.06. The lower chamber is 0 0.233. Um, roughly 16 inch um, slot ports for each one. I think one 16.2 and one 16.75. Um, got a 100 watt amp plate on the back with a four inch woofer and uh, really pleased with the overall results. I'll give you a little bit more specific breakdown in a minute. Here's a little mini peek inside of my six order mini subwoofer. Um, the original plan was a for the front chamber to be a, a 40 hertz roll off and the rear chamber to be an 80 hertz roll off um, roughly 0 0.06 cubic feet for the rear chamber and the front chamber I think is 0 0.233 uh, each one had about a 16 inch slot port in there and uh, I, I got it tuned up pretty well I used uh, to close out the, to do all the slot porting I had to leave one side open I left this this top part open so I could do all the slot porting and closed up using uh, Gorilla Glue which foams up about one and a half times its uh, original mass and so it foams up really well and gives a good connection you can see it at all these ports on that one side where it looks like it's sealed up really well the woofer I chose is a 4-inch Dayton Audio, the TCP-115, but it's the 4-ohm version. This is the 8-ohm version I actually didn't use for this one, but I'll use for another um, project. Um, again, got decent numbers. I think 40 watts uh, RMS, 80 watt peaks, a good low QTS number for being in a high-order enclosure like this. Um, X max, I think four millimeters and, and it's got a lot of punch for being in a little small package like this. The plate amp is a hi-fi DIY plate amp, um, hundred Watts per channel and four ohm for the, for the sub and 50 Watts for, um, the, the main speakers here. Um, I put it in its own sealed box so I can literally remove that box and, and it sealed off from the rest of the sub. But I did in its sealed box, I put a couple of vents here for convection cooling to cool the, the chip amps in there. Um, it has uh, an input and output RCA jacks here and it's also um, a Bluetooth 5.0. Um, nice size and good, good performance, good power with a, a four ohm driver. It really does um, send some decent power to it. For the power supply, I, I knew I wasn't, for such a small driver, I wasn't going to be throwing 100 watts at it. Um, so I chose one a little bit less than that. This is a 24 volt, 3 amp power supply, which equates to about, from what the math online says, about 72 active watts. I'm not getting anywhere near that with this a unit as far as utilizing it. Um, I don't want to damage it. Another problem with um, uh, high order band passes like this, you don't always hear the mechanical damage before it's too late and damages a woofer. So I'm probably using quarter volume to a half volume is about as much as I'm maxing out with the, the volume on this and it seems to handle it fine. A little port excursion example. Final thoughts about this build. It was interesting that just with uh, three main parts, really two on the speaker itself there, you're looking at about 60 bucks here with the amp, the woofer, and the power supply. And you can use whatever wood you like. This is half inch material. Most of it is uh, MDF with anything that I put a screw in. I actually used plywood and I, I like to be able to kind of take the drivers out and things like that. So I use plywood for all those connections. But uh, being simplistic in some ways, the cabinet was probably the most 
uh, difficult cabinet I've ever assembled here. So glue up and uh, working out how to clamp and get everything tight and sealed correctly was definitely a challenge. So I, I enjoyed it. I don't I don't know how many more high order uh, bandpass uh, speakers I'll try here, but I've enjoyed that side of it. Overall, I'm pleased with the way this came out. When I was originally designing it in WinISD, and knowing that one of the features was I wanted to keep it small, again, internal volume of 0.3 cubic feet uh, was definitely going to be limiting. Even with a, a four inch driver, uh, the deal is I'm trying to still get it to dig deep down the 40 hertz here. Um, with that in mind, I, I knew I was going to have some some port and possibly X-Max issues there. Uh, the X-Max issues in WinISD modeled at, a, at anything around 12 to 15 watts was maybe going to make this driver hit its X-Max. And although the, the port simulation for air velocity uh, seemed to be okay, I am getting a little bit of chuffing. A little bit out of the top port, um, even less out of the bottom port there. But um, I'm getting some port noise out of here. It's so soft that when, when I had the satellites plugged in, I could not hear it while the satellites were plugged in. I turned the satellites down, then I could hear a little bit of the port chuffing there. And uh, I turned the... Um, the ports and face the wall cranked it up and I couldn't hear the chuffing at all, even at very loud volumes here. So it still, I think, performs well in a small space desktop use here. This thing really kicks kicks some butt there. Um, just surprising how much you can get out of a, a four inch driver in, in, in a cabinet like this. Uh, again, complicated cabinet build, simple on the parts, but um, enjoyable final pro product here. And, and I, I am curious to see if I will try some high order bandpass in the future.